um, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I am Komal Soni and I am from Delhi Technological University that is in Delhi. And here uh, I am working with uh, Dr. John Markley for the past two months. And uh, this the project that I have been working on is investigating the interactions of bacterial C. viribar with other matter molecules in the iron sulfur cluster biogenesis. So I'll walk you through the, through the uh, interaction A, workflow, results, conclusion, and the summary. Now what is an iron sulfur cluster? Iron sulfur cluster are basically ensembles of the iron and sulfide centers. They're found in a variety of metallic proteins like the ferroxins, the NADH dehydrogenase, cytochrome uh, uh, reductase, etc. And the most common form is the 2Fe2S form, which exists as a rhombic structure, as shown. Now, uh, uh, it can either be in the reduced form or the oxidized form. The reduced form has uh, one ion as uh, in the 2 plus and the other in the 3 plus state, while in the oxidized form, both of them are in the 3 plus state. The A. Uh, ion sulfur clusters are ubiquitous and are required to sustain the fundamental life processes. They participate in many biochemical processes like the uh, electron transfer, substrate binding, catalysis, regulation, sensing, etc. But the biosynthesis is still a mystery. As in a lot of uh, groups are working on this particular thing, but then again, uh, uh, controversy still exists about the uh, actual mechanism or, and the cascade of interaction that are taking place between the proteins. So the three mechanisms uh, that, uh, that are uh, suggested are uh, the NIF, which takes place in the nitrogen uh, mat maturation, the ISC, which is the iron sulfur cluster, and this is the one which uh, I have focused on, and the third one being the sulfur utilizing factor. Now this takes place only in cells which undergo uh, oxidative stress. So this is the basic mechanism which takes place in a eukaryotic cell, this is the mitochondrion. Uh, this uh, ergo IS, uh, ISU1 is the scaffold protein onto which the ion sulfur cluster assembly takes place. <coughs> now it is known as ISCU in prokaryotes and uh, the other uh, partners like the uh, NFS1 is the cysteine desulfurylase. It uh, degrades uh, cysteine into alanine uh, uh, so as to release sulfur which is uh, assembled on the scaffold protein. And on the other hand, frataxin, which is uh, acting as an ion chaperone, uh, brings the ion and assembles again onto the scaffold protein so that the uh, ion sulfur cluster is formed. This is the first step. Now, in the second step, the ion sulfur cluster is transferred onto the target protein uh, with the help of uh, certain molecular chaperones like SSQ1 and JAK1. Now, frataxin is the eukaryotic orthodox of uh, C. viribar which is a protein uh, I have concentrated upon in my project. Now this is a very controversial protein because uh, many people say that uh, it acts as an iron chaperone, just as I said. But then other people say that it uh, is an, uh, a gatekeeper which helps regulate the amount of iron sulfur clusters that are produced according to the num number of target proteins available. And then some people say that it, it is not uh, an iron chaperone at all, an ICA, which is another protein. It's actually responsible for uh, bringing the iron and uh, assembling it onto the support protein. So it is a very controversial protein and that is why it's very interesting to study it. The workflow, uh, that, that is what we did. Uh, firstly, the NHSQC of C viable, then with unlabeled ICS, then with ISCU, then with all three put together. Then we uh, repeated the experiments in the presence of iron 3, then iron 2, and then gel filtration study to that, and then the data analysis. We uh, processed all the files using NMR pipe and then the part was used. Now HSQC. HSQC basically stands for uh, heteronuclear single quantum coherence. It is uh, basically a, a crude uh, NMR experiment. Whenever you, it, it is a 2D NMR, so whenever you want to go in for experimentation and studies, for example for ligand and substrate binding interactions like we are doing. So uh, this is the first experiment that needs to be done before anything else. So that's what we did and uh, it needs to be performed using a heteronucleus that can be either carbon-13 or N15. So we used N15 throughout the studies and then uh, the peak for each unique proton attached to the uh, heteronucleus appears in the spectrum 
and the number of peaks in the spectrum should match the number of residues in the protein. But then, uh, if your res uh, residue contains uh, uh, nitrogen in the side chains, then additional peaks do appear in the spectrum. So this this is just another representation. This is the uh, hydrogen attached to the nitrogen. And this is another one, both of them appear as cross peaks in the spectrum. This is what an NHSQC looks like. Uh, on one dimension you have the nitrogen chemical shift and on the other you have the hydrogen. And the results. This is the uh, NHSQC of C by FI. This is a very beautiful spectrum as you can see that all, almost all the peaks are uh, clearly separated and they are circular. So it's uh, nice spectrum uh, and uh, and you can see that uh, are labeled the residues now uh, for labeling for identifying which residue is present where you need uh, a, a whole lot of other experiments like the uh, back for backbone and side chain assignments but we did not do that what I did uh, I just uh, went to BMRB and the chemical shift data that was deposited with it I just copied it onto my spectrum and I was lucky to like obtain about 80% of the residues I could identify. That is. This uh, shows an overlay of the C by wire with ICS onto C by wire. So uh, you can see that some of the peaks that like the blue the blue peaks they have disappeared and only the red ones are visible here. And there is some shift here as I've zoomed into some of the residues so you can see. Uh, so this clearly represents that there is some interaction that is occurring because some peaks have disappeared, some uh, have shifted, so uh, it shows possible interaction. Yeah, so uh, here this uh, is the X-ray crystal structure of the C viva and the residues in green are the ones which are uh, actually showing interaction with ISCS. This uh, is an overlay of CYIY with uh, ICU that is the whole protein onto CYIY. So it's clear that uh, all the peaks, all, almost yeah, all of the peaks have uh, completely overlapped. So it shows that no interaction exists between CYIY and ICU. Uh, this this result shows that CYIY does interact with iron 3 As you can see, uh, there are a lot of shifts occurring and some peaks have disappeared also. Uh, I'll just show you another picture. Yeah. So I just put this picture so as to show how uh, the chemical, uh, the, the peak can shift. Here, as you can see, as we uh, increase the amount of iron, the peak has shifted. So it's clearly visible how uh, it shifts. And even for these, this residue, this residue. So. Again, uh, I'll highlight represented the residues in green as the ones which uh, are found to be most uh, affected by the addition of iron 3. This is a chemical perturbation uh, uh, graph that I've plotted and the residues which are represented in red are the ones which uh, showed disappearance of their peaks after the titration and the residues which are not showing anything are either because I could not identify them because uh, I could identify only 80% of the residues and for some residues uh, the peaks actually did not appear in the spectrum so that's why it is missing. And here you can see the highest it is this this is corresponding to serine 28 and this is one of the residues one of the four basic uh, residues which we also identified uh, in this one. So. Uh, here you can see that uh, uh, I, I just told you that CYIY does not interact with ICU, right? But then we could observe interaction between CYIY and ICU in the presence of iron 3. Four residues, this here, this here, as in I've uh, marked them here, the four residues which showed interaction, that is, some subtle changes in their peaks are occurring on the addition of iron 3, so it shows possible interaction between CYIY and ICU with the help of iron. Um, iron 2 studies were done in the anaerobic conditions and we were able to reproduce almost the same results as we obtained with iron 3. The same residue showed uh, changes as I had just shown you earlier. 
Yeah, and then uh, we uh, wanted to just check whether the ternary complex is formed between the three, that is C Bariva, ICU and ICS. So we carried out the gel filtration study and a single peak was observed, so it shows that the complex is formed. And the, it was enabled at uh, 70 ml. But then we also obtained some mysterious results and we need further uh, experimentation to show what they actually mean. Like we obtained similar elution volume of ICS and ICU complex as well as uh, C Viva, ICS and ICU. But there should be some difference because C Viva is around 10 kD. So it should have been resolved but then we just observed uh, almost similar elution volumes. So. And the second is the failure to isolate C Viva and ICS complex. So in the gel filtration result, we just obtained two separate uh, peaks for C Viva and ICS. Though we should have obtained just one for the complex because it has this approximately the same uh, affinity as that of ICU and ICS. So, so that that was again uh, a very weird result. So we need further experimentation to see what it actually means. So. Uh, yeah, uh, we have observed that these four residues play a key role of inter uh, in the interaction of C Y O R with ion two and ion three both, and it is also clear that C Y Y uh, interacts with I C S and I C U and has a definite role in the formation of ion sulfur clusters. But we uh, uh, also need some uh, uh, further experiments so as to clarify, so as to verify uh, that our results, the, the, the ones we obtained, are true and side-directed mutagenesis would help us in that because uh, then we can just replace those residues with alanine and then study if there is an effect. And also uh, per deterioration experiments can be done so as to obtain the peaks clearly onto the spectrum and then identify them properly. To summarize, uh, ion sulfur clusters are central to life and important for a wide array of processes. Uh, the cascade of interactions between the various components of the ion sulfur cluster uh, synthesis is not that well established. There are still very uh, huge controversies existing and uh, there are interactions between C by ever, ICS and ICU only in the presence of ion and with ion that is, yeah. Now, students, uh, I would like to know the Quran program, Dr. John Markley for uh, allowing me to work in his lab. Jin, who, who is my co-guide and helped me for the uh, my entire stay. Kai helped me in the beginning to uh, like learn every everything. Zichi, I I used to bug him all the time. And then uh, Ren and Rita, they helped me throughout. And they, uh, for the funding, uh, which is provided by the University of Wisconsin, IUSSG, DBT India, I thank you, family.